Hi YouTube and welcome to a little something we're gonna call Unhinged Cooking for Nerds. Title uh, up for debate. <laughs> Feel free to come up with a new one. So unfortunately I didn't save the clip from this happening but I assure you what happened the first time that I played Pokemon Legends Arceus on the Switch and I got to the end of the first mission and you're greeted with this delicious looking potato mochi. I was like, potato mochi? That's a thing? <laughs> like, I want that right now. I'm not a picky eater. I won't eat shellfish though. Shellfish is not good. But I do love like starches, carbs, of course. <laughs> Potatoes in particular are among my favorite of the foods. And so on that day, months ago, I vowed that I would make potato mochi. And like that week, I went out and bought the ingredients. And here I am, what, three months later? I'm ready to do it. <laughs> and the thank you for that motivation comes from Rain Body Fuel. Today I'm drinking my second favorite flavor, my first being Rainbow Sherbert, my second being Orange Dreamsicle, which tastes like one of those orange popsicle things. So thank you, Rain, for sponsoring this video. Let me see if I can get this open. If you're interested in also making potato mochi, I'm gonna tell you right now, like this is not <laughs> me teaching you how to do it. You know, maybe the recipe will come out good and then I'm happy to share it, but it's gonna be like 50% looking at what recipes I can find online, 50% winging it. So I do watch my fair share of Food Network, so. It seems what we need here is one or two large potatoes, which don't worry, got that covered with like two large potatoes. Unfortunately, the recipe I'm looking at is like one potato. Do you think they intended me to get a potato the size of my head? I don't know, but here we are. One ginormous Pokemon Legends Arceus pin. Just kidding, that's not part of the recipe. I just wanted to show it to you guys because it's really cool. Uh, we do need some butter and milk, which I'm just gonna leave in the fridge for a minute. Here's the one that I had to get off Amazon. If you have an Asian grocery store nearby, that's probably the better course of action. Uh oh, where is it? No, although you could use this to make a different kind of mochi. Sweet rice flour. Uh oh, scadio. Where did I put it? Okay. The other thing that you need that's more of a specialty item. Um, I don't know, maybe this is something you can find in your grocery stores, but I couldn't find it anywhere nearby. Potato starch, which is like literally just the starch. If you never had mochi, the mochi that I've seen is is like a rice flour mochi. Basically they steam the rice um, to the point that it turns into just like a super um, gluttonous, gluttonous is that the word I'm looking for? Glutinous, super gluten-y ball. So super stretchy, chewy dough. We will not be using rice flour, we'll be using potato starch, but the idea is that we'll put enough extra starch into these potatoes that they become chewy. It's really fun to play with the bag also. So I've got these, and then there's a sauce that goes over the top. So it's gonna be like really, really plain if you don't add the sauce. The sauce uh, seems like a soy sauce, sugar, and mirin recipe. Here it is. Listen, I told you I'm not a cooking expert. Rice, it's made from rice, now I know the answer. So we're gonna combine mirin with soy sauce and sugar and this recipe also says sake. I don't have sake, I didn't get sake, so there will not be sake in my sauce, but I think it's okay, we'll just use a little bit extra mirin. I think that's it for ingredients. So this is, as far as I can tell, pretty simple recipe. We're gonna start by peeling our potatoes and cutting them up to boil them. I grabbed my Pokemon Center cutting board, which poor Pikachu here has seen better days. It's a decent cutting board, it was cheap, it was only like, I think $20, uh, which is cheap for licensed merchandise, but um, yeah. So anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and chop, chop, chop. Okay, I deserved that sip of rain. Potatoes are chopped, as you can see here. Uh, you just want them to get down. If you're if you're using my method of cooking them, 
this is how I make mashed potatoes, so that's what I'm going with. You just want to chop them down to roughly um, even sized chunks so that none of them turn to ultra mush when you boil them. And also they all become soft at the same time. I got a pot of water, but I actually don't. I feel like this might not be big enough for the amount of potatoes I have here. I'm going to get a different pot of water. Okay. This is more my speed, or my potato speed at least. Put the lid on so that it boils a little faster. And now we wait. Okay, well I'm getting my potato facial here. Uh, I wanna show you, I'm gonna pull these off the heat now, I think. Kinda what you're looking for here. These are my potatoes. If I scoop them and I get my fork and I push my fork through, it should pierce all the way through relatively easily. It's okay if there's whoa, a little bit of tension. You don't want them to be literally literally falling apart because then they're gonna be watery. Like literally the water will have seeped further into the potato. You don't want that. You could 100% use like a strainer. Scoop this or pour these into a strainer, no problem. Uh, I'm just using a slotted spoon because I hate cleaning the strainer. I don't have a dishwasher, and sometimes you make sacrifices when you don't have a dishwasher. I bet you Benny in Pokemon Legends Arceus doesn't have a dishwasher. So here we are. I mean, unless a dishwasher fell through like the space-time rift and then Rotom into it, then I guess maybe Benny could have a dishwasher. It's possible. Okie dokie. Now for some of the fun stuff. Oh, why did I leave that open? So now we have this bowl of steaming hot boiled potatoes. I want mashed potatoes so bad right now, but we're gonna save those because we're gonna use those to make potato mochi, not mashed potatoes. So basically we're gonna mash these up. I probably should have used a bigger bowl too late right now. Mash these up, mix in some potato starch. How much? I don't know. Mix in some milk and some butter. So literally we're just making mashed potatoes, but with potato starch. And by the way, if you want this to be a vegan recipe, you can, as far as I know, use uh, your choice of vegan milk and vegan butter and it, it should be fine. This is the bowl we will be using, whether you like it or not. How do I want to mash this? Fork? Yeah, okay. <laughs> this is working, I guess. For the record, I 100% have, of course, I have a potato mashing device. I have like the smashy thing, but it is um, not probably going to work with the bowl that I have stubbornly decided that I have to use. These are really dry potatoes. They're very crumbly because I haven't added anything yet. So I'm going to go ahead and now add butter. I don't know how much, I'm just gonna, a chunk of butter. Okay, so the recipe I have is based on using one potato. I'll put the link to that recipe down below. It's from the website, um, Okonomi Kitchen, it looks like. I'll put that link down below. It says one tablespoon of butter for one potato. So I used two potatoes, but they were large potatoes. I'm gonna go with three tablespoons of butter. All right, I'm not gonna lie to you. I. I went a little beyond the three tablespoons. It's probably closer to four tablespoons of butter here, but you know, butter never hurt. Well, yeah, it definitely did hurt some people, but. And then to make things worse, the milk, I am also going to be a heathen and just eyeball. Two tablespoons of milk. So like twice as much milk as butter. That's probably good. All right. Get some solid liquid in there. Solid liquid. <laughs> so anyway, while I'm mashing this, uh, I just wanted to say Pokemon Legends Arceus is one of my favorite games in years, not just favorite Pokemon games. I just think it's super fun. The story is really good, even though it's sparse. Like it's it's purposefully sparse in the places that it needs to be, and leaves a lot open to the imagination and also a lot open to explore in potential future games. I really, really hope that Pokemon Legends Arceus gets, or Pokemon Legends gets more games in that series because I had a ton of fun with it. Technically haven't beat it yet. There's 
one Pokemon left to find, and then I get to fight God himself, which I'm pretty excited for, but I've been holding off so I could do it on stream. It's pretty mashed right now, so now what I'm gonna do is this fun part. Starch. So the recipe calls for two tablespoons, again, for one potato. Five tablespoons, maybe? Biggest measuring device I have is a teaspoon, so. Oh, I did not, I shouldn't, oh well. <laughs> I shouldn't have cut it straight across the top. I should have cut like just a little opening. All right, well, we're gonna go for three teaspoons. I hope I'm, I hope this is accurate. I think three teaspoons makes a tablespoon. So if I go one, two, Three. I feel like this isn't an exact science. This isn't like I'm baking a cake. I just, I'm just trying to make it more glutinous. Four tablespoons. One. I probably could have, um, I could have like mixed it up and then decided if I wanted to add more. I could have done that, yeah. I want the full potato mochi experience. So let's get it in there. Look at the powder in there. It's just strange looking because it's it's coating the potatoes very distinctly. So the other thing is you, with bread, like the more you mix it, the more you develop the gluten. So I wonder if that's true here too. Or like, I think that is true with potatoes where if you over mix mashed potatoes, they become gummy. So maybe the other key here is to just mix these a lot, like too much a lot. You know what, I'm just gonna go, for, I'm just gonna add a little more milk and also more starch. I'll just do like one big teaspoon more. YOLO. Ugh, it's getting a little harder to mix, so I feel like it's working. Or my arm has just become tired. I'm not entirely sure which, but. Okay, I am okay with where we are with this. It is literally a bowl of mashed potatoes with the potato starch mixed in. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt right now because I can't imagine that this is going to, I mean, we're putting a soy sauce sauce over it. So it's gonna be salty, don't get me wrong. I don't want a lot of salt. I don't wanna make this salty. I don't wanna make it like it would actually make mashed potatoes. I just want a little so that it's not like you're eating unflavored mashed potatoes. At the end of the day, if we just make little mashed potato cakes, I love mashed potatoes, so it's fine. All right, let's work on our sauce now. Important update, I have now looked at the recipe and realized I wasn't supposed to put butter in the mashed potatoes. The butter was for frying. Oops, oh well, it's <laughs> too late now. That actually might explain some of what's going on here because I think maybe without the butter, it would be more sticky at this point, but too late. <laughs> maybe I need a redemption in the future. We're gonna make the sauce. So the sauce is uh, two tablespoons soy sauce, two tablespoons sugar, one tablespoon, two tablespoons mirin. So equal parts soy sauce, sugar, and mirin. Easy enough. This is very likely a decent amount more sauce than I need, but it's fine. We don't have to use the whole thing. I'm gonna bring the butter back out because we're gonna use this to fry with, now I know. And I'm just gonna stir this sauce until the sugar is combined with the mirin and soy sauce, I guess. As a soy sauce lover, oh my God, this smells so good. I could just, could I drink soy sauce? It's gonna be good enough. I'm gonna set this aside so I don't accidentally bump it and spill it everywhere. I'm gonna take another sip of my sweet, sweet, delicious Orange Dream School rain. Now we're gonna set our sights on actually taking these mashed potatoes. I'm gonna wash my hands again. We're gonna try and shape these into patties that will be fried. I guess like burger patty size is kind of what they look like. Bonus points if you don't have fingernails like this because I don't think these are gonna do me any favors in the patty shaping department. They're definitely not hot hot anymore so I can definitely just put them in my hand it's fine again wash your hands if you have any finger jewelry take it off yeah I think this would have been better served without the butter but they're very easy to shape is the good news it stays together I don't know 
but it, it looks the right shape give or take right so we're gonna fry this in butter and see if it holds together and then we'll add the sauce on after let me finish shaping all of these now that one looks worse that one has fallen apart extra that one has like extra moisture but this one looks pretty okay but then i try to pick it up and it's not anymore i don't feel good about this all right and now i'm gonna gently add these in maybe if i can even like i can't even pick this back up without it falling apart <laughs> I don't think that's going to stay. So we will see how well these guys stick together frying in this butter. There's like a decent amount of butter in there. Like they, they move independently. It's a nonstick pan to be fair, but it's not a good nonstick pan. So I just, I highly doubt that there's enough going on that this is going to hold together, but maybe there's a magic that's happening right now because of the gluten in the potato starch cooking again. I don't know, I don't claim to be a food scientist, so let's just let it do its thing and we'll see what happens. They aren't completely falling apart yet, but I do feel like they're getting softer, which is not a good thing. I can tell you from a smell standpoint, they smell like potato pancakes or like latkes right now, so I guess that's a good thing. I suppose. Okay, usually I'm pretty patient, but right now I'm hungry and I really wanna make sure I'm not like burning anything. So I'm gonna attempt to scoop under, I'll scoop under this ugly one. See if it's even possible. Cause I need to see the underside to know if it's, it needs to be flipped or anything. Oh no. Come on. And even if I get under one, oh God. Oh, okay. It has a film. Well, let's just, uh, <laughs> well, okay, that, sh that could have gone longer. I recognize this now, but it does have a film. I just completely screwed it up by scooping it. So if we wait, I think we might have something here. Just this will be the reject. I would go play a round of Switch Sports Bowling, but I don't trust myself. I think I'll end up playing like 10 rounds and these will burn, so. I'll wait. It's fine. They're getting like crispy on the bottom. So I, I think this is going to be time to try. I'm so scared. I'm just going to ruin them all. I'm so frightened. Okay, let's just see if I can scoop gently. Maybe I should have just done three at a time because the issue is partially that I don't have space to get the spatula under it cleanly. Okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Not bad, not bad. So this is on the spatula. Let's see if I can nicely flip it. Ready? One, two, three. Oh, not bad. It kind of kept its shape a little, little bit less round, but that's good. Good. Okay. Happy with that. Let's do another. It is smelling really good. I will say that even before the whole soy sauce sauce goes on there, it smells like fried butter and potatoes. So Thumbs up. So these are looking pretty solid. I have a pretty strong feeling that I have a film on both sides now. I'm not gonna try and flip it again because I think it'll end poorly for me. So I'm just gonna say like, we're good. So the next step here is I'm gonna actually add about half of this to the pan. This is that sauce we made, equal parts soy sauce, mirin, and sugar. I tasted this. It's pretty sweet. I kind of want to add more soy sauce, but I'm going to refrain because it's going to cook down a little. And so I think that'll make it more on the salty side. Um, also, I think it's supposed to be a little sweet. So that's why I'm going to pour about half of it into this pan now and hope that it doesn't burn or do anything bad or splash onto my white shirt. There's some in the middle. Kind of put it around. Oh no, it's not what I meant to do. It's okay. It's syrupy because there's a lot of sugar in there. Okay, that was more than half. Oh well, my bad. Oh, it is bubbling, huh? Interesting. Fascinating. Oh, what happened? They're all together. All right, I'm gonna try and turn this. Okay, don't splash me, please. This guy's probably getting crispy compared to the other ones, so he's gotta go.
Ooh, okay, all right, all right. Okay, maybe a little flatter than originally intended, but okay, all right. That seems relatively accurate. The recipes I found online all um, have a little wrap of nori, of seaweed on them. I didn't include that because in the game, there's clearly not any of that on there, but maybe they just didn't feel like drawing it. So I'll, I'll mention it, but I think it's probably okay without it. I don't think that I'd be able to pick this up and eat it, but it looks good. Maybe I'll do two. Let's go try this in the other room where I can sit and enjoy. Okay, sorry for the weird lighting. There's like one really bright light to my side because my other light won't turn on all of a sudden. Let me get this out of the way real fast. Yes, I am eating at my computer desk. Yes, I am a heathen. It is what I have available to me right now. I'm sorry, again, this goes back to the whole small apartment thing. I don't have a kitchen table. Come on. It looks really good, I'm not gonna lie. It looks just like a delicious, I don't know, a delicious coated potato pancake. It just looks good all around. I'm pretty excited to give it a shot as I scoop into one on my fork. Like it's got, there is a slight film on it where it's been fried. That is for sure true, but it is also still soft, relatively soft at least. And the fork should go pretty easily through it. Oh, did you see that? There was some stretch there. Hold on. I don't know if you could tell, there was definitely like some stretch in the potato that ripped. That's the inside. It is literally just mashed potatoes. Let's give it a shot. Are the potato mochi in real life anywhere near as delicious as they appear to be in Pokemon Legends Arceus? Um. It's chewy. It's actually, I mean like, it's not chewy like mochi, but the potatoes have clearly become like gummy on the inside. Mostly tastes like fried potatoes and butter. Probably because I put like four times as much butter as I was supposed to on the inside. I just want you to see the potatoes do like stretch a little differently than regular mashed potato would. They're like a little gummier. The sauce is pretty subtle and it might just be that I could have put more on there or maybe have poured a little on after even cooking it down. But I kind of like how subtle it is. Don't put a big mouthful, bad idea. Oh, it was so hot in the middle. <laughs> oh, I'm crying now. Overall, delicious. Overall, this is a win. Yeah, sure, do this. If you have very base level cooking skills, maybe don't put the butter in the mashed potatoes since that was a uh, oops on my part. I'm gonna try, I just have some sushi seaweed here. Let me cut this open. Now I can actually hold it because it's being held together by the nori. So that's something to consider, especially because it's a saucy thing. So maybe that's why the nori, not for a flavor thing, but just because you have somewhere to hold it because it's, it's sauced up. Okay, all right. Flavor wise, I would say not a necessary addition, but also not a bad one. But function wise, totally worth grabbing onto these, I think. And now that we know how to make these ourselves, we can officially kick Benny to the curb. Get out of here, Benny. Don't like him. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Rain, for sponsoring. Again, like, I've been talking about making this video for months. I honestly wouldn't have made it if it wasn't for Rain sponsoring. So go give them a thank you. And if you haven't tried it yet, my favorite flavor is rainbow sherbet, spelled R-E-I-G-N, rainbow. But this is my second favorite flavor, orange dreamsicle. And there's plenty of others to choose from that are also delicious. So genuine recommendation. Rain is really good. And thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. Part two of my PAX vlog, if you're waiting for that, should be up in the next maybe tomorrow, but at least in the next couple days. Look forward to that. In the meantime, I've been playing some Switch Sports, product provided by Nintendo, and I will be streaming today 
on YouTube, so if you miss it, you can catch the, the stream on my channel after the fact. The Stanley Parable for the Switch, the Deluxe Edition, is now out. I played that game more than 10 years ago when it originally came out on PC. I love that game. I'm so excited that it has new content, and I'm really excited just to kind of rediscover it because I haven't really thought about the game in so long, and it, it, it's such an interesting game, so looking forward to that. If you enjoyed this video and want more like it, let me know down below, but if you didn't <laughs> enjoy it, um, go, no, I mean, if you didn't enjoy it, you know, you can still let me know, but let me know what you do want to see so I can give you more of that. All right, I think that's all for now, but thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Love you. Diku, diku, diku. Da na 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 na, 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 da na 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 na